Okay, so now we've seen at least abstractly how we construct a vector space or a set with the vector space structure, which I'll remind you was just a set of elements that we can define a particular operation called vector addition and scalar multiplication. And we'll remember that in order to define this scalar multiplication, we also needed an underlying field, which I'm going to take to be the real numbers. So when we defined the vector space, we didn't say anything about how we actually add or scale and multiply vectors in practice. We just defined it abstractly as a map. And this map has to satisfy a certain list of rules that the vector space axioms. So for vector addition, these were commutativity, associativity, the existence of a neutral element, and the existence of the inverse, which are frequently referred to as Caney. And then similarly, we had scalar multiplication, which takes a field element and a vector and gives you another vector. We saw that this had to satisfy associativity, distributivity, uh, another distributivity law, and then the existence of an identity scalar. OK, so now we know what structure a vector space should have, we can begin to ask what kind of sets actually can we make into vector spaces or can we realize as being vector spaces. So the example I'm going to start with is one which you hopefully should be very familiar with, the regular kind of vectors you might be used to thinking about as arrows. So the set we use for this is the set which I'm going to call R2 which simply stands for R Cartesian product with R. Now, if you remember what this Cartesian product means, it means that elements of this R2 set are these pairs with one element taken from the first set and the second element taken from the second set. So the best way to visualize this set, R2, you simply take one real line you choose the point, the zero point for it, and then you just nail another real line through that point. You nail their origins together, their zero points together, and then the whole set R2 fills the board in this way. The elements of R2 are these pairs of numbers, one number coming from this real line here, so I could choose this one, say, The second number from this real line, which gives us this element here, A, B. So hopefully this should be a very comfortable notion. We should be familiar with this sort of Cartesian space and we can sort of loosely think about these as being coordinates on the space. So now if we consider these pairs of elements, all these pairs of elements, actually form a vector space. If we now visualize, rather than calling this um, point AB as a point, we visualize it as a arrow drawn from the origin. So if we visualize points in this space as being arrows that we draw from the origin, Notice we're always starting at zero and we're finishing on this point. The whole set of these elements, these ordered pairs, they form a vector space because, and I'm not going to go into too much detail of the nitty gritty details of this, but you should be familiar that you can add vectors. So if I have two vectors like this, I can add them and there's some, it's just a third vector. Notice I'm drawing this away from this origin point now, I just want to think about the arrows themselves. Now we need to show that this addition operation, which we're doing kind of pictorially, is commutative, associative, there is a neutral and there is a inverse.
So commutativity is immediately obvious. If I call this one A, this one B, A plus B is going to be the same as B plus A. So that's good. Commutativity is satisfied. So for associativity, we can easily see this just by drawing a few more arrows. A plus B plus C. And now whichever way you, you draw this, you could write A plus B first, get that arrow, then you could do add on to that C. So that's C. This is A plus B. And then you could just as equally have done I'll draw A just in the right place for now. You could have done B plus C first. And then it's kind of a bit harder to see because I've drawn it um, this way, but you can see that the arrows, the tips all match up. So A plus B plus C is equal to A plus B plus C. So we have associativity as well. And now the neutral element is fairly trivial. We just simply add nothing to the vector. So we can add the, the zero point. And then finally inverse, we simply just add the vector with going in the exact opposite direction, which adds up to zero. So we have a neutral and we have an inverse. So we've shown that this kind of reasonably concrete example of um, line segments drawn from the origin or we can think about them as these pairs of numbers we've shown that they add in the appropriate way such that they form a vector space and now it's fairly trivial to consider the scalar multiplication operation which simply takes any vector call it a and then if we choose some number say gamma, the resulting vector is going to just be gamma scalar multiplied a. Now in our case, because the vectors that we're dealing with come from a set R, which is also the underlying field that we're using, this simply just reduces to multiplying uh, the vector component So I won't go all the way through proving all of these axioms. They're fairly easy to see. Associativity and distributivity are all trivial. And the identity element is simply you take the vector and you take the scalar 1, which simply gives you back the original vector. So hopefully this fairly non-technical example should have convinced you at least that the arrows that you met as vectors in elementary school are a proper vector space as we've defined it here. So I did this example fairly non-technically just by drawing pictures of arrows. We could have done this entirely with working with these pairs, not ever thinking about arrows, just thinking about pairs coming from R2. the same constructions would have applied, we would have been able to show that we can add and scale and multiply in the correct way. So now hopefully you should start to see that arrows or pairs are one of the many possible things or sets that we could have which admit this vector space structure. So as we go forward it's useful to keep these kind of ideas in mind but we should know that what we're dealing with as vectors are a much more abstract notion. This is just one of the many realizations of what we call a vector space.